What's up, man? Hey, what's going on, Jason? How much? How you doing? Oh, not too bad. I'm glad I got the uh, vanilla gorilla about on this podcast here. So I want to thank you for coming on the show, dude. My man, appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Hey, not a problem. So uh, uh, what have you been up to lately? Uh, yeah, so um, previous to the fight, my wife and I purchased a gym. Uh, I was a personal trainer at this gym. Um, so we took over, bought the gym. Uh, we had a week to kind of like redo it, reconstruction everything, put up a bunch of stuff, paint walls, do all this kind of stuff in about a week. Um, that was right around the uh, beginning of May. So we opened up May 18th. Uh, so I've been kind of just running the gym, um, getting everything ready to go, getting signs put up, uh, getting ready to put some social media up, get everything kind of social media blast going. And that's kind of kind of what I've been up to um, besides besides training. Oh, right on. So it, like when you say a gym, is it like an MMA gym or is it just a regular gym? Uh, it's a it's a personal training gym. So it's just a, okay. much, it's, not a it's not a big gym. It's not a big place. Uh, it's about 2,200 square feet. Um, I just have personal trainers working, working for me. Uh, think of like, like a hair salon, how like hair salon, they rent space, they rent booths. That's kind of what my trainers do there. Uh, I have a massage therapist there too. So that's pretty much what I do. Uh, I do personal training pretty much 5am to, to 9am. Then I go to training, then I go back to work and then I go back to training and I come home pretty much my day every day. Damn. <laughs> so you're staying pretty busy then. Yeah, um, there's a lot of times that I wasn't busy and I really didn't like it, uh, especially during quarantine. Uh, we were kind of locked down. And I was like, man, well, I'm not doing anything in my life. I just feel, you know, I can still train, but I wasn't doing anything like worthy of like what I felt like I should be doing. So when I bought the gym, it kind of gave me a, a resurgence of what I need to do with life. Right on. So you're you're still in uh, you're still in Missouri, right? Uh, I just actually moved to Kansas. Uh, we bought it <laughs> during the time we bought the gym and took the fight uh we bought a new house and moved to the new house so all in the same of of june uh we bought a gym bought a house and fought in the ufc so it was kind of a crazy crazy month we're in kansas now though damn okay so are you are you still training at uh glory still or no yep yeah uh, i'm still at glory man fitness i always will be uh, i'll never leave there it's just it's the best gym there is best coaches everything you need uh it's actually the exact same distance from my old house the glory that is my new house to glory. It works out pretty well. Oh, nice. So you're like training with uh, like Grant Dawson and Megan Anderson, players like that? Megan Anderson, James Krause, Zach Cummings, uh, all those people every single day. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess we'll kind of – I want to uh, kind of just start from the beginning here. So uh, before I get into how you got in the UFC, but uh, – what made you get into MMA in the first place? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it was a long, it seems like so long ago. Uh, uh, a buddy of mine, we were buddies, I, buddies with quotations. Uh, we got a fist fight one day to school, and uh, I ended up winning the fight, and we didn't become friends after that. And then a couple years down the road, we met each other at a gym, you know, like a weightlifting gym. They had kickboxing stuff there, too. Uh, so we started kind of training together. Um, I got hooked up with a guy named Bill Brown. Uh, he was a he was a karate guy, but he had an MMA, MMA place in Kearney, Missouri. Um, ended up training with him. Uh, ended up starting training with my uncle, who my uncle was a professional kickboxer and boxer uh, in the past. Kind of ended up training with both of them and uh, took a fight. I was 21, 22 years old. Took a fight um, in about six weeks. I'd only trained about six weeks. Ended up losing the fight. And at uh, 22 years old, you're kind of a cocky, cocky kid. Nobody can beat you. And uh, I lost the fight. And after that, I just kept training, training, getting better and better. And that's kind of how I just got hooked in MMA. Just I didn't, I didn't wrestle in high school. I didn't do uh, in many sports in high school. I didn't do anything. I just fell in MMA and fell in love with it. And then kind of just lost the fight and ran from it, ran with it. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you bring that up, but the whole thing, but you get into like a bit of like a street fight and then that kind of uh, draw you into uh, MMA. Like a guy I just uh, interviewed last week, week and a half ago, he's a local MMA guy. He just started out, 
Uh, he's only had two fights, both TKOs. Or no, one was TKO, one was submission, I think. Um, but he, same thing. He was doing, like, he was doing a bunch of street fighting. Now, mind you, he was doing a whole bunch. He said you just kind of got in a fight. Um, but he's he was doing a bunch of street fighting, and he, he knew that he was pretty good at it. And he's like, well, why don't I actually, like, do something with my life and maybe like bring this fighting and, and make it actually professional and that and be able to kick people's ass and make money at it out of it right um so i i find that i guess like if you if you have that tendency to be able to fight you should you do you should do something with it yeah i wasn't i wasn't ever really a a fighter like i didn't i didn't want to fight my friend just it just happened to be that way i didn't want i don't really like, i like competition uh, I oh, like okay. who's the better man. I like that part. I'm not a violent person. Um, fighting does kind of run in my family, though. Uh, like I said, my uncle is a professional boxer and kickboxer. Uh, my father was, uh, <laughs> where does it sound? He was kind of a notorious like bar fighter. Like he was always, like he was a biker, so he got in, got a bunch of fights. He was kind of known throughout the city as a, as a notorious fighter, which is kind of crazy. So, well, who doesn't like bar fights, though? <laughs> I mean, if you go to jail, I don't like them, but you know, I like watching them. Hey, more power to y'all. You be there. The you there you go. Um, so I mean, like you've had a you have a good resume of of uh, both finishes. You you know you have quite mo- more of uh, of submissions versus TKOs. So what is it that you prefer more? Uh, man, I like TKOing people. I like sleeping people. It's just one shot and you're gone. It usually doesn't. So my submissions aren't. Um, they're not off like I took you down and I just grind you out and submitted you. It was I hit you, you took a shit shot, I took your back and choked you out. That's pretty much how that always happens. Mm-hmm. I, I turn, uh, I turn like really good strikers into shit grapplers who make mistakes, and that's how I just capitalize on that. So well, I, I know that you have like I think like seven, like. Yeah, you got like seven submissions on your resume, and a lot of them are like rear naked chokes. Is that just how it kind of turned out, or do you enjoy doing having that submission? Uh, first off, I love your accent. I think it's awesome. Uh, I, I have can- an accent, really. You say out, out. I yeah. love it. <laughs> I fought in Canada a couple of years ago, and every like the stereotypical. I didn't even change the question, but the stereotypical like Canadians, like you're all super nice. You all have that out and about like it's it's awesome. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, I I uh, I I I didn't I don't notice it. Like I've asked people like, do I have some accent? Like people that are that were from are from America. Like they're like down in the south or they're whatever. And they're like, no, no, I don't think you do. I'm like, okay, just making sure because uh, you know, like I've I don't know like. I, I know my sister has said like I have so we're like we're like we're we have like the Irish background so for some reason like she thinks I have a little bit of like Irish accent which doesn't really make sense you kind of have to be from the country but uh, she some she thinks I somehow adopt a little bit of like accent with certain words I think it's just me but <laughs> cool. but uh, yeah sorry I was asking about um. Uh, about uh, so is it the rear naked chokes? Is that something that you just enjoy doing? Is that just how it kind of turned out? A little bit of both. Uh, I think I'm good. Um, I'm good at rear naked chokes, uh, strong and powerful. So once again, that chin is just kind of it's locked down. Um, but it just usually it happens. There was a fight in LFA that uh, I hit the guy with the head kick and he shot in, and like I did the John Jones where I stepped over his back. Mm-hmm. I had my coaches yelling at me, get out, get out, because I was losing two rounds. Of you know, two out of three rounds, um, and just sunk the choke in and still finished the choke. It was just kind of the, the way it happened. Right, right, yeah. And I and I typically, yeah, I, I just find a lot of fights kind of happen that way too. Like, um, I typically see a lot of fighters when they get rocked, they'll, they'll kind of crouch down because obviously they're hurt, or they get like a body shot and somebody wants to hop on. It's just much easier to just take their back versus, you know, but I guess most people are just gonna wail on you. I guess, but um, I'm in. I'm in there to win. Winners win. Like I'm. I'm yeah. not. I, uh, James Cross gave a speech today after class. He's like, "Look, I don't care how you. I don't care how you guys win. I don't care if it's a split decision. I don't care if it's ten second knockout. Like, winning's winning. Doesn't matter how you. I just want to win. That's all." So, are you one to like look for the the knockout or the finish, or you just you just want to make sure you win? How, like, what's your mentality? Uh, kind of game plan a little bit of everything of what we do. Um, mm-hmm. 
the game plan going in. Obviously, that changes a lot of times. Stuff doesn't work out the way it always does. Right. Uh, but I know I have a lot of power in my hands, so when I'm I'm not looking for the knockout, but I know at any opportunity it's there. So I'm more trying to set things up and just kind of almost law to sleep and then hit them with the power. That's what I what I look for. And if they if they fall over, if they shoot, take a crappy shot, um, and I take their back, that's that's their problem. It's just that's the way it played out. Yeah, oh, right on, man. Um, so how was the process of getting into the UFC? Uh, it was a, it was a long process. Um, <laughs> uh, you can ask my managers. I bug them day and night. Uh, I text them multiple times, especially with COVID and stuff coming up. I knew a lot of the people weren't going to be able to make weight or weren't going to be able to train as much as they normally would. I was fortunately able to train as, as much as I wanted to. Um, so I, I bugged everybody and, you know, it, it took a long road to get there. I took a lot of fights and I, 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 be on a five fight win streak, I'd lose a fight. I'd be on a four fight win streak, I'd lose a fight. I'd be on a five fight win streak, I'd lose. So, so there was a lot of ups and downs getting to that. Um, mm-hmm. And I called Jason. I texted Jason House uh, the Saturday before the fight. I said, "Hey, man, um, I'm hearing it's a lot of just like logistics, like why I'm not getting fights. Uh, it's just travel. It's just people being closer. It's people being able to make it on three, you know, three hours notice and get to Vegas." And I was like, "Look, man, there's no, there's no logistics. There's." I, I'll buy a private jet. I don't give a shit. Just give me the UFC. Give me where I need to be. Um, you know, like, like there's no logistics. Like, I'll drive there. I'll fly there. I don't care. I can make weight. I'm ready. To, I'm in shape. Let's go. Um, and then he called me right as that text message. And he said, hey, look, like, this might not happen until, like, August, September. Let's go to the contender series. Let's look at uh, – just stay ready. Just just be prepared for what there is. Like, uh, But I'm not seeing it happen until August, September. And so – Saturday, uh, Thursday rolls around. Thursday, it's about twelve o'clock. I'm eating Chipotle because you know I'm hungry and whatever. Yeah. Uh, they give me a phone call at twelve forty-five saying, "Hey, drop everything you can." Mind you, it's Thursday. I have my personal trainer. I have six more clients, so I work from twelve to six when we're straight through on Thursdays. Right. I canceled six more clients. Dropped everything I had. Drove home. I had my wife pack a bag for me real quick. Uh, they're like, "Hey, you need to get blood work done." So. I had to get on a plane by three o'clock. I left my gym at two forty-five, two fifty. Uh, they're like, "Hey, you need blood work done." So I had, you know, basically an hour and a half to get blood work done and get to the airport. Uh, I was going ninety miles an hour on the highway. Ludicrous and people move, bitch, get out the way. Like I don't care. <laughs> uh, made it, got blood work done. Was super stressed out. Made it to the airport by two ten. So got the phone call two forty-five. Made it to the airport by two ten. After I packed my clothes, left. Got everything, uh, got blood work done through the airport, got on the plane, got to Vegas by 6.30. So it was, a, it was a crazy, stressful day, but super exciting at the same time. And sorry, what, how, what, uh, how, how much notice did you have for this fight? Uh, technically, like, maybe 48, two days, 48 hours tops. Damn. So I had to Damn. make... So- I had to make weight at nine o'clock. So I took the fight on Thursday, weight at uh, 9 a.m. the next day. So I got to Vegas at 6.30, started cutting weight at seven, um, made weight 9 a.m. the next day. So did you, did you have much of an issue making that weight? Like how did that go? Uh, no, it was actually a pretty easy weight cut. Um, surprisingly, uh, normally I walk around a little heavier, but I was, I was fortunate enough to be uh, a little bit lighter this time around. My body wasn't, my body wasn't doing well. Uh, I'd taken that Thursday off from training because I didn't feel great, uh, which is actually kind of a blessing in the size. Um, I was walking around like 182, 183, right around there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it wasn't too much of a cut, but I think it was all the sodium, and I had a gallon of water in me, so it actually made it pretty easy. It wasn't really that bad. I think it was, I think it was two one-hour and fifteen-minute sessions, and I was, okay. I was like, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing terrible. I didn't feel bad. I didn't feel dry or you know, sucked out or nothing. Okay. Well, like, I know uh, other fighters have said, like, it's nothing to cut, like, 10 pounds just like that. Yeah, especially when you have Chipotle, which is a bunch of sodium, and then water. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier. Yeah. No, Chipotle is good, though. I mean, can't, you, you know, you got to enjoy it, right? <laughs> the problem is my gym is right next to, next to Chipotle. So, like, I really? get, get it on my Chipotle app, order it, schedule it right between it between clients so i have time to eat right between clients and then yeah it's i spend way too much money there it's 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 bad (laughs) 
Yeah, it is. But um, like when you're when you're off season or when you're not fighting, do you have a bit of that fear of trying to stay? Like, do you do you try to stay clean most of the time just in case you do get another short notice fight? Yeah. Uh, so before this fight, um, you know, I was always on like I was always on point. I had to make sure I was ready. Um, just because short notice fights always came up, like I took a couple of fights on two weeks notice, three weeks notice. Nothing crazy, but I'm always in shape. I don't, I don't ever quit training. Um, and I eat pretty healthy, just just the way I am. Um, I have a pizza every now and then. I will have some ice cream every now and then. But you know, um, I don't gain weight super easy. I walk around 185 tops, 190 on like you know cheat days or whatever it is. Um, so making weight super not hard for me. Uh, there's been talks of me going to 55. Don't really want to do that, but you know that's that's for future conversations later on. Um, but yeah, I usually eat pretty clean. Uh, my wife eats pretty healthy. She works out too. So that kind of helps to have a support system at home. That's not overeating garbage food. That's good, man. Yeah. It definitely does help when, uh, when you're living with someone that, uh, that can also not only support you or support, uh, what you're doing, but can support with, with the dieting for sure. It just makes it a lot easier. You don't have as much temptation. I find, um, like for myself, I, uh, um, I'm not, hundred percent there yet i'm not totally sure if i want to do it but i wanted to do a show like bodybuilding show and uh i know it's a little bit different obviously from fighting yeah, um, sure. but like um for me like right now i'm in the process of preparing for that um possibly if i wanted to um so Stop. yeah like it's really hard like living at home and and um like i have support but I mean, it's still, it can still be difficult because you're watching other people, you know, mow, mow down on all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, uh, yeah, thanks. You know, like, I mean, it's, it's my decision at the end of the day. It's our decision at the end of the day to, to put what, what's in our body. Um, but I mean, the temptation, it's harder to watch other people do things. And it's like, well, that's really nice that you're getting that. And I have to basically eat the same thing every day. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that was uh, that was one of the reasons I started eating healthy is because I lived at home with my parents. Um, I didn't start lifting weights till I was 18 years old, 19 years old. Um, I started making my own meals at home because I wanted to eat healthy. My parents didn't eat like super healthy; they eat Wendy's or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Stuff. But I started making my own food just so I could, uh, just so I could eat healthier. Like that's that's the decision I had to make. Now I was fortunately I have good good genes and I'm athletic, so. I was always pretty lean anyways, but that always helped out anyways. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. The dieting, I think, I guess they say it's like 70 or 80% of fitness or whatever they say. Like, I think it's especially, 70, 80%. Especially, especially bodybuilding, especially physique shows, especially those things. Um, that's when it plays a huge factor in, in recovery and how your body works and a lot of stuff. Well, and it, it kind of blows my mind how you get some fighters, um, just in general, um, how they can come out and they're just absolutely beasts. Like if you look at Paulo Costa, like how you can uh, maintain that kind of muscle, but be able to have the, um, but to be able to train with that kind of muscle. And I, it's, it's crazy how guys like that can stay like that. And cause I mean, bodybuilders, you just have to worry about getting big and that's pretty much it. And you do cardio just to, just to, you know, to burn the fat and whatnot. But as in fighting, you have to learn to, you know, obviously you have your cardio and you have everything else you got to work on. So like, you know, to, to be able to keep that tip top shape is must be difficult. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't mark my words or quote me on this, but I feel like there might be a factor that another, another factor that plays into Paulo Costa. (laughs) No, you're not wrong there. (laughs) All that genetics. I don't give a shit what you say. There's uh, to go five rounds. I mean, that, that, jacked is there's there's uh, i feel there's something else going on in the the background well you know it's interesting you bring that up because um i was reading something uh yuna i can't say her name she's the russian bantamweight girl yuna kunitsaya whatever her name is uh she's one dating tiago santos um but she was mentioning how when they were training in uh outside the u.s she said like she never got tested or maybe she might have got tested once. And when they got back in the U S immediately, they were getting tested like crazy. And she's like, you just got to wonder if these fighters are getting tested as tested as much as they, as much as they say they are outside the U S. So you got to wonder if there's still guys getting away or 
athletes getting away with this stuff. And I, I think it's totally wrong because not only is it cheating and it's not fair, I think it's dangerous. I think it's it's absolutely dangerous for guys to um, take steroids or take whatever they're taking and you're punching people and you don't know how, how strong someone can be with that kind of supplement. Yeah, that's a fair statement. Um, I definitely, it's against the rules, so that makes it cheating. Um, mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I think they're, I think, I don't want to say USADA is doing a great job, but they're doing a better job. Um, you you got to understand the decline of a lot of fighters since USADA's come in. Like you see a lot of fighters who aren't the way they used to be. They didn't fight like they used to be. They don't look like they used to. Um, back no. when you, um, so I think, I think USADA is doing a great job of that. Um, but yeah, I still think, uh, I still think people, there's loopholes around that. There's people still going around it. And it their own. You show up in a cage with me and you're on roids, I don't give a shit. I'm beating the shit out of you anyways. If I, beat you, <laughs> if, I, if I beat you, regardless, if I beat you on roids, it's even worse. It just makes you even look worse. Like, you know what I mean? So take, take everything you want. I'm still going to whoop your ass. It doesn't matter. Well, it's it's so different when Cejudo fought Dillashaw. I mean, like, I don't think Dillashaw should never had cut down to that weight. He looked dead to me. Um, but even at that, I mean, the guys still cheated and he lost. So, yeah, I don't know. I like, was, was dehydration. I don't think his brain had time to recover from the weight cut. No, uh, I don't think because you've seen him get hit pretty hard. Uh, Cody No Love. Oh my God! A couple times he got back up, wobbled a little bit, and was right back. But that's a thirty-five. That's a ten-pound weight cut. That's a big difference. Uh, when you when you cut down 25, 10 pounds of water, your brain does not rehydrate that well after that. I think that that played a big factor in it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, like, so you don't you don't normally have a problem cutting down to 170? Never? No. Uh, I've had problems cutting to 55. It's just 15 pounds is a big difference. Um, right. I'm, I'm not a big guy. Uh, I'm muscularly a big guy, but, like, we've talked about going to 55. I just think it's – I like my life. I like being able to, like, hey, if I want ice cream, I can have ice cream if I want, you know, uh, if – if I don't want to diet today, then I can eat whatever I kind of like. If I want tacos at Chipotle, I'm going to eat tacos at Chipotle. I don't have to go. Well, I can only have this amount of chicken and this amount of, you know what I mean? Like, so I don't, I don't weigh my food. I don't have to do any of that stuff to make 70, but 55, I think it'd be a different story. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That would make sense. Um, yeah. So let's just kind of, uh, skip forward to, um, your, the fight that you had with Sato. Um, obviously you didn't come up on top there. Um, but taking the fight on short notice. Um, so where does that kind of leave you? Uh, did you sign, uh, so many fight, like, did you fu- s- sign a certain multi-fight contract? Uh, how does that working out? Yeah. So when I took the fight, uh, that Thursday, um, it was an opportunity. It wasn't, I didn't even have a fight. It was like, Hey, you're a backup fighter. If you pass the COVID test, you pass this, you might fight. Like it wasn't even, it wasn't even a fight. It was an opportunity. Um, so when I got to the airport, my manager, uh, texted me and said, Hey, you got a four or five contract. So even if I didn't have a fight, it wasn't about, it wasn't about taking the fight or it wasn't about fighting. It was about me making the opportunity happen to get a four or five contract. That was, that was kind of the, and my managers played that really well. They, uh, they negotiated very well. They said, Hey, look, he's taking off some 36 hours notice, whatever it was. Um, he needs more than four fight or he needs more than one fight contract. So yeah, I got a four fight contract. Um, which helps me out a lot. Uh, leaving the Santa fights, yeah, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't satisfied. I was, I was completely disappointed. Um, I have a lot to work on. I know there's a lot of things that, that like factors that played into that fight. Um, I'm not a guy to make excuses. I won or I lost fair and square, just the way it is. Um, but coming back into training camp now, my intentions way different. Like uh, uh, I've, I don't take weeks off, but I haven't like trained as hard. I'm kind of resting my body a little bit. But mm-hmm. like, I know my intent in my head is different. Uh, the things I need to work on is different. Um, just being in the UFC makes makes me want this even more. It's not even it's not even a, a question anymore. Like, right? Yeah, and and that and that sucks. Like nobody wants to lose, but I mean, you know, you just go back to the drawing board and uh, and you know see what you got to do. Um, but I mean, like, so it does that. Did that fight include in those four fights? Do you have three left, or do you have four automatically? Uh, I have three, so that, that okay. included, uh, it was a four-fight contract, and if I fought, it was part of one of those. Okay. Yeah. So, 
in that contract so what does that contract um, consist of it, or do you are you only allowed to fight certain people or are you only paid so much how does that work out uh do you want to know the honest answer I haven't even looked at the contract <laughs> like that uh you get a certain amount of fight certain amount of fight and a certain amount to uh make weight so you get those i know that um i'm pretty sure they're all it's all paid the same uh, i don't even remember what it is like I said, I just took the fight because it's what I needed to do. It was the opportunity I needed. Um, yeah, I just know it's a four fight contract with some something to win, some something to make away. Some, some I don't remember the details. I really don't. That's why I have managers for it. So <laughs> that's why I make them do the work because uh, I don't worry about that stuff. I just worry about training, and that's how it is. Well, that's what you pay the manager for, right? Uh, that's true. That uh, is true. Um, is there anyone that you would like to fight, or are you just taking whoever they give you? Uh, I'm taking whoever they give me. I don't really have a, especially after a loss, I don't have any room to call people out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've always wanted to fight Mike Perry. I think that'd be a, yeah. barn, I think it'd be a barn burner of a fight. Um, I don't think he's fighting anytime soon now because of the whole, I don't know if whole incident. Um, but I think with me and him, just two power gorilla looking dudes banging it out i think it'd be a fun fight right on so are we thinking like maybe you can just have your uh have your woman in the corner next fight or <laughs> yeah my wife my wife asked me about that i'm like yeah it's not, I'm like it's like why he did i'm like yeah he's a crazy son of a bitch and i'm like look you can't go into the battlefield and cut throats with your family standing in the background it doesn't work that way oh exactly does your does your uh wife can i say wife or girlfriend yeah. Yeah. wife Okay. Does she normally come to your fights anyway, or? Yep, she does. Um, okay. She's to quite a few. She usually goes to the ones that are in town. Um, okay. She, she was in the last one. Yeah, she comes to everyone. My mom comes to every single one. My mom drove to Chicago uh, to watch me fight. She went to Minnesota. Like my, a lot of my family goes and watch fights. So I have, I have a great support system. Nice. So. Um, when you when you do fight, uh, does the organization organizations that you have fought in do they just normally pay for your family or how does that all work out? Uh, no, that's that's all my family. Oh, Organiz- organizations nice. pay for they pay for you know my hotel, my travel, stuff like that. But no, my family is just hundred hundred percent supportive. Um, they they pay for it, they pay for the hotels. Fortunately, a lot of places we go to like if I fought in St. Louis, we have family there. If I have, we fought, I fought in uh, Minnesota. I had family there, so that helps out a lot to be able to, instead of paying for a hotel or something like that. Right on. Yeah, I, I just wish that they would do a little bit more for for uh, the fighters and their families, for sure, because, you know, it's not, you know, especially UFC, I know seating's not cheap whatsoever. It's, uh, I mean, like, for anybody, like, it's, um, I tried to go to, um, oh, what was it? It was the UFC 218, I think it was the one, it was uh, Holloway and uh, I don't know. Was it Holloway? It, I think it was the one in Detroit. I think the one, the first one they ever did in Detroit. It was with Ngannou and uh, that one when Ngannou just destroyed uh, uh, Overeem. I think that was the one in Detroit. I wanted to go to that, but even with the conversion to American to Canadian money, it was just I was like. As much as I love, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I love MMA. I love to support fighters. I just like I can't, I can't go to something like it's just. Yeah, yeah, your best, your best view is on the TV at the end of the day in your home. Especially the, the nosebleed seats. I mean, I still, I've been to one UFC fight uh, that was UFC Kansas City. Uh, I had teammates fighting on that too, so it was cool. Uh, I didn't get super close, but like even then, the tickets were really expensive. But uh, yeah, in the nosebleed seats, you're not, you can't see much. They're like stick figures fighting. But, but yeah, I, I still think I, I'd want to go to one. Hopefully, I can. Now that I'm in the UFC, they might give me a little better seats. <laughs> there you go. Um, actually, uh, yeah. So, how what's your feeling about the new uh, 2020 or 2021 20, uh, Venom uh, UFC deal? I was hoping for Nike, but um, I, I I can't. I, I don't know. I mean. I, They'll have to prove it. You know what I mean? Like I, I can't, I can't say, hey, this is gonna be terrible. This is gonna be bad. They have great gear. They have great. I have their shin guards. I have their safety gloves. They have great uh, clothing. Mm-hmm. Um, so they can't be bad. Look, I've, I'm one fight in the UFC and I lost. Like I have no room to even negotiate. Right. You know, um, I think, I think they'll. 
I think they'll come out with their best game. So, so I'm kind of excited to see where that goes. Um, you know what I mean? Like, like Reebok, they lost Reebok, and then they were going over Nike and Under Armour and all that stuff, and Venom came up. And, you know, I think Reebok's still into their shoes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I think, I think Venom will do a good job. I think they have the room to do it. I think they'll want to uh, do a better job. Yeah, for sure. I mean, after what happened with the Reebok, and I know you say you don't want to have much input on that, but uh, for me, just speaking here, I, as a fan, I just, um, I understand the fighter's frustration with, um, with the pay and everything. Like, um, a couple guys have mentioned, like, hey, like, uh, like Sean O'Malley, like he was talking about Reebok was making like, I don't know, something like a million. I don't, I don't know if that's true, but uh, he mentioned something about him, like they're making one million off him, and he was only getting like three grand out of it. And I get that frustration. I get that. Like when you're when you're getting up there and people are making money off you, and you only get it like not even a third of the share. Like that's not. I don't feel like that's right. Um, especially when these fighters, like, I mean, if you have to, if you're fighting, and that's the only way to support yourself, you have to have something in there to help you and. I just don't think it's right. Yeah, I've heard I've heard different things, uh, this and that. I don't know which is true. I don't know what's I don't know if it's UFC that Reebok pays the UFC and the UFC pays the fighters or Reebok pays the fighters. I honestly don't know how that works, so I I don't really have a say in that one. Um I'm just happy to make more money fighting right now than I ever have been. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'll take that over, over that of scratching for money. Always half glass full, right? Of course, man. You gotta say positive. Yeah, um, yeah. So I guess I'd um, just reflecting on your career so far. What's been some of your favorite and not so favorite moments? Uh, good question. Uh, the trip to Canada, if you wanna. <laughs> that was uh, I fought Ryan Dix, Dickerson, Dixon, Ryan Dixon. Uh, I fought him in Burn- Burlington, Burlington, Ontario, right outside Toronto. If I'm not okay. Concerned. So I fought him on two weeks' notice. Um, he was eleven and three. I was four and two, I believe. Um, yeah, didn't I think I was just kind of getting thrown in there? Um, drove up or flew up with James Krause. Uh, never took a trip to anywhere with James Krause. Didn't really know him that well. Uh, got a really good chance to know him on that trip. Uh, went in there, knocked out Ryan Dixon in a minute, and then came home. So that was kind of one of the one of the funnest trips I've ever had. Uh, that was just it was just pretty cool to go and beat a guy I didn't think I could beat, and then do it on somebody else's territory on a like two weeks notice. That was pretty cool. Um, one of the worst ones was uh, I fought a guy as an amateur, probably one of the, the gnarliest knockouts I've ever had um, or anybody's ever witnessed. Um, I hit him with like a like a thirteen punch combination, like I hit him with like a one two uppercut, two three uppercut uppercut, and I knocked him out. Um, and as he was falling over, I head kicked him so he was falling over and I head kicked him and then knocked him out again. And it was just vicious. Um, fast forward a few years later, uh, we're both pros and he ended up guillotining me in the first round. And it was just, he just talked a bunch of shit the whole time. And it was just one of my worst fights, one of my worst moments that I've ever had. Um, from then on, like I started training it. I think that's when I started training glory. I started kind of reinventing myself and I think I went on like a seven, or eight fight win streak or something like that after that. Something crazy. Do you kind of find um, like every fighter kind of has to lose to know where they stand, I guess? Like, does every fighter need to have that loss to know what that loss feels feels like so it's kind of weight off your shoulders? Uh, a little bit. Like, um, I always talk to people about this. Um, I always say the only difference between like there's a big difference in the sport compared to like football, right? Football, you have to you have to lift weights, you have to do conditioning, you have to study plays, you have to practice, right? Mm-hmm. In martial arts um, of any kind, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, um, even fencing, shit, one-on-one sports, you have to you have to, to practice, you have to do weightlifting, you have to do conditioning, you have to do all that stuff, you have to study film, you have everything. But you have to lose. Like in football, you don't have to lose to get, to get better, I don't believe. In training, you have to get better. You have to be that white belt. You know what I mean, you have to be the blue belt, you have to be the purple belt, you have to, you have to move up the ring. You have to learn to lose. So I don't know, like, like no matter what, everybody's losing, except for Khabib. I don't know if that big guy even loses anything. Um, but <sighs> yeah. I think 
you have to lose. I don't think the loss as a fight, like in a fight fight, technically makes a difference. It does for a lot of people. But you got Khabib and John Jones, like they're not losing, they're still just gangsters as can be. Um, but you have to lose in the training and you have to understand that what it's like to be beaten over and over to get better. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I, think, I, I think the people who do lose like me, like if I lose my intent coming back, I promise you is I'm coming back harder and better. Like I'm going to get better. That's just the way it is. Yeah, it, it, it certainly does. It, um, it certainly does give, I think motivation too. Um, and it just gives, uh, I think it makes people even more hungry and know, Hey, I want to avenge that loss. I want to, uh, come back stronger. As you said, well, it, it kind of, um, it kind of points out what you need to work on, right? And and you can learn you can learn stuff from a win. There's no doubt about that. Um, but from a loss, like you just have an immediate immediate understanding of what needs to be worked on. Like, okay, why did I lose here? Oh, to get choked out. Okay, I need to work on GC. You can work on that. Um, with a win, if you're winning, you don't really get tested as much. And there's a lot of times that I've been in like three three round wars where I, my eyes shut and I still want to fight, but there's still a lot to work on. But I think from, from a loss. You immediately understand the repercussions of what you need to work on. Mm-hmm. That kind of makes a big difference, right? Yeah, I know, and that's that's just it. Um, yeah, but um, uh, I was gonna keep going on here, but um, I just want to. Uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you're busy, mm-hmm. and I know you got some training and stuff to do. So I just wanted to thank you, Jason, for coming on the. Me and my dude. Chill. I'm sorry. Just me and my dude chilling. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> But I, I still want to thank you for coming on the show, Jason. Uh, it's been a pleasure for you taking your time to talk with me and, and having this interview here. It's been nothing but a pleasure, man. Absolutely, man. I appreciate it so much. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. Hey, not a problem, Jason. You take care, okay? All right. Take it easy, bud. You too.